Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to Walking Through the Book of Exodus. I'm your host, Ruel Barksdale, and I hope you're enjoying our series as we walk through this phenomenal book, this second book of the Bible, the book of Exodus. Exodus meaning leaving. We're getting out of here, y'all. And today, 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 we get to the very doorstep of the children of Israel leaving the nation of Egypt, leaving bondage, leaving where they have been enslaved. So listen, grab paper, grab pencil, grab your iPod, your your electronic device, and we will walk through this phenomenal book, the 11th chapter of the book of Exodus. Now, you will recall that uh, last week, we, we left off with, Mo, with Moses standing in front of Pharaoh and Pharaoh saying, don't let me see you again. Don't let me see your face again. And if, and if we don't understand this truism, then we will think that the 11th chapter is a problem because Moses is talking to Pharaoh. Now, when the Bible was first written, there were no chapters and verses. That was put in later so that we would be able to sit down and and, and refer to different sections of the Bible and easily find it. But chapter 11 is a continuation of the conversation that is happening in chapter 10. So when we get to chapter 11, I'll, I will start with the end of chapter 10. Just a couple of verses that I want to share with you before we get to the 11th chapter. Isaiah 55, 9 through 11 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Let me give you the shortened version of that. If I said it, it's going to happen. My word can't come back to me void. My word can't come back to me without fruit. My word can't come back to me without accomplishment. My word can't come back to me empty. If I sent my word out, Count it done. All right. All right. Now, let's see what God's word is before we go into this 11th chapter. Let's go back to the fourth chapter of Exodus verses uh, 21 through 23. The Lord said to Moses, when you return to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders I have given you the power to do. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says. Israel is my firstborn son. And I told you, let my son go so that he may worship me. But you refuse to let him go. So I will kill your firstborn son. I told him that back in the fourth chapter. And between the 4th chapter and the 11th chapter, some, some things have happened, y'all. Between the 4th chapter and the 11th chapter, you, you had water turned into blood. You had the plague of frogs. You had the plague of gnats. You had the plague of flies. You had the livestock. You, you had boils. You, you had hail. A lot of stuff has gone on. And, and you, must not, uh, you must understand that this last plague, the 10th plague, the firstborn death was not God's tenth attempt, wasn't God's tenth alternative, wasn't God's tenth try. It was his first plan. God doesn't need a plan B. God never needs a plan B. When he says, don't let what you see make you doubt what God said. And those nine things that happened between the fourth chapter and where we come tonight, 
Pharaoh had nine chances to turn around. Pharaoh had Pharaoh had nine chances to repent. Pharaoh had nine chances to say, I understand that God is God. Pharaoh had nine chances, but Pharaoh's heart was hard. And so God gave Pharaoh the desires of his heart. The death of the firstborn wasn't God's tenth attempt. It wasn't God's tenth plan. It was plan A because God knew what God knew. All right, so let's go to now th- three questions I want you to consider as we're going through this this chapter of the book of Exodus. And we'll touch on these three th- three things and then at the end of our time together we'll summarize these three things. First thing, in life, what makes you angry? What what just makes your blood boil? You know, I think you can tell a lot about a person by what makes them angry. Second question, what is your Egypt? Egypt is a place of bondage. Egypt is a place of enslavement. Egypt is a place where I'm not free to do what I want to do. I'm not free to serve the Lord the way I want to serve him. I'm not free to worship him. That's what every time Moses says, let my people go. He said, let them go so that they may worship me. I'm not free to. What is your Egypt? What has you bound? And then the last question, are you preparing to leave Egypt? Has God's word told you that you're going to leave and are you preparing to leave? Three questions. Consider those three questions. All right, let's go to Exodus, the 11th chapter. And we will start, however, at the 10th chapter, the end of the 10th chapter. We'll go to... Um... Verse 27 through 29, and then we'll go right into the 11th chapter, verse 1. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was not willing to let them go. Pharaoh said to Moses, get out of my sight. Make sure you do not appear before me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Just as you say, Moses replied, I will never appear before you again. It's important to understand there's no there's no pause there. We go right into the 11th chapter. Now the Lord had said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Remember he said that back on the fourth chapter, what he was going to do. After that, he will let you go from here. And when he does, he will drive you out completely. Not only is he going to let you go, he's going to drive you out of here. Tell the people, that men and women alike are to ask their neighbors for articles of silver and gold. The Lord made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people, and Moses himself was highly regarded in Egypt by Pharaoh's officials and by the people. Now, wait, wait a minute now. When we first started this journey, the Israelites didn't even trust Moses. Who are you, Moses? Why, why should we follow you? Pharaoh wasn't predisposed to be enamored with, with Moses. The Egyptians couldn't care nothing about Moses, but by this time, and why weren't they now changed? The Lord made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people, and Moses himself was highly regarded. Why? Because when God has his hand on your life, and when people can see the fruit of your life, And when people can see God working through you, it changes things. So Moses said, this is what the Lord says, Pharaoh, hardened heart Pharaoh. About midnight, I will go throughout Egypt. Every first, remember what we said in the fourth chapter? We went through nine plagues, but here it is. God's word will not return unto him void. About midnight, I will go throughout Egypt. Every firstborn son in Egypt will die. From the firstborn son of Pharaoh. Now see, you gotta understand the firstborn was was a was a position of prominence. You 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 were just like the king and the queen of England, the, the firstborn sits on the throne. The firstborn is the first in succession. The firstborn gets most of the the lion's share of the inheritance. The firstborn in every family becomes the leader. The firstborn was critical. To the culture of Egypt, every firstborn, and already killed everything that, that symbolized a god. 
Now I'm going to kill what you call your culture. Every firstborn son in Egypt will die. From the firstborn son of Pharaoh who sits on the throne to the firstborn son of the slave girl who is at her handmill, and all the firstborn of the cattle as well. There will be loud wailing throughout Egypt worse than has ever been or ever will be again. But to show you that I'm God. And I'm able to distinguish my people from, quote, unquote, your people. But what are you about to say, God? Among the Israelites, not a dog will bark at any man or animal. There won't be as much of a threat from a dog bite. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. All these officials of yours will come to me bowing down before me. Not you, Pharaoh. Not you, so-called God. All of your people who follow you, after they're going to bow down before me, saying, go, please leave, please, God, we can't take anymore. Go, you and all your people who follow you. After that, after that, I'll leave. Then Moses, hot with anger. See, again, Moses didn't get angry. This is the first time we see we saw God getting angry with Moses. But we never saw the word angry, uh, anger attached to Moses. But why are you angry, Moses? Because now I see the hand of God. I've seen, Pharaoh, that you've had choice. You've had chance. You've had opportunity. You, you, you have seen the, the power of God. We've gone through nine plagues. You've seen signs. You've seen wonders. But your heart is hard. And now all throughout the land, there's going to be wailing and crying and gnashing of teeth. And it doesn't have to be that way. Have you ever tried to reach somebody, tried to witness somebody, tried to, tried to help somebody? And, and, and it might be something simple. Like they, they know that if they eat certain foods, it's going to kill them. They know if they continue to smoke, it's going to kill them. They know if they continue to drink, it's going to kill them. And you get angry because it doesn't have to be that way. Pharaoh, the firstborn didn't have to die. And now Moses is angry. What makes you angry? You can tell a lot about a person by what makes them angry. Sometimes people get angry at the most trivial things. They get angry at the stop sign. They get angry at the red light. They get angry because the food burns. What, what, what makes you angry? Ephesians 4, 6. Be angry. angry. Anger is a temporary emotion that is directed at a person, place, thing, or event. Nothing wrong with being angry, but, but, but. It's not the term that comes next. If you go to Ephesians 4, 6, we, we misquote that. We say, be angry, but sin not. No, it says, be angry and, and, be angry. I'm not telling you not to be angry and, don't sin. Moses, don't take things into your own hand. I know you're angry. Just keep doing what I told you to do. Second question, we see that in verses uh, 2, Tell uh, with chapter 11 tell the people that men and women are alike to, are to ask their neighbors for articles of silver and gold why why because we get ready to leave here and, and I know you haven't I know that you've seen nine plagues and Moses and Pharaoh hasn't budged I, I know that you've seen decade upon decade generation after generation enslaved I, I know that you've been wailing and crying and pleading for a long time don't let what you see make you doubt what God said when there is a forecast of rain and the, and the weatherman says there's a 90% chance of rain, you grab an umbrella. When God tells you something, grab an umbrella. Doesn't matter what the sky looks like. Doesn't matter what other people say. When God says something, count it as done. Why are you angry? What is your Egypt? What keeps you bound? What keeps you from operating as you wish to? What, what do you wish to be free from? And if God has told you something, prepare for it. If God has told you that he's going to buy you. A, if God has told you he's going to, and this is carnal, this is physical, but, but people relate to this. If God has told you that he's going to 
uh, buy you a house, prepare a house for you, start looking at furniture. Start calling moving companies. If God has told you that he is going to uh, bless you with a car, start looking at car dealerships. Start look. If God has told you something, prepare for it. Don't wait until you think it's imminent. Prepare for it as soon as he tells you. He's telling the children of Israel now, you get, get gold, get silver. Why? Because you don't know it yet, but you're going to build me a temple. And you're going to need gold and silver to do it. You, you're about to leave here. And you're about to leave here relatively quickly. So I need you to pack up. I need you to prepare. I need you to bring some stuff with you. Prepare to leave. Let's get out of this 11th chapter. The Lord had said to Moses, Pharaoh will refuse to listen to you so that my wonders may be multiplied in Egypt. Moses and Aaron performed all these wonders before Pharaoh, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's, the Lord gave Pharaoh the desires of his heart. You want to have a hard heart? Okay, I'm going to help you to have a hard heart. But if you want to, be, see, the, the, the question of the 21st century as it was then is do you believe in God? question of the 21st century is do you believe in Christ the question that Moses and and Pharaoh and the and the Egyptians and the children of Israel had to wrestle with do we believe the God of gods my, my brother my sister it's, it's a question of belief do you believe God do you believe what he said do you believe in who and what he is Moses and Aaron performed all these wonders before Pharaoh but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites go out of his country. The next chapter is one of the most quoted, read, celebrated chapters in the Bible. Chapter 12, we'll talk about the Passover. What is the Passover? God's going to fulfill his promise of killing the firstborn. But how is he going to distinguish? He's going to put blood on the doorpost. And the death angel, when the death angel sees the blood, the angel's already got the swords drawn. God has put his hand out. Not yet. Didn't have to go through nine plagues. Not yet. Didn't have to go through flies and locusts and gnats and, and boils and, and hailstorms. Not yet. Time is now. I'm going to kill the firstborn. Put the blood on the doorpost of my people. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Oh, my God. The beauty of that statement is that's still true today. Are you under the blood? Well, we'll talk about that next week. So listen. Woo! You got to be here next week. When we look at the 12th chapter of Exodus and we see the Exodus of God's people. So listen, till next week, tell a friend, tell an enemy about our walk through the book of Exodus. And maybe by the time the next week is over, you and your enemy will be friends. I love you. God loves you more. Bye-bye.